So um, I'm going to be doing like research and shit like that. And tonight we're going to go down the rabbit hole, which is known as the St. Pedro Pedro haunting or something like that. That's all I want is, whoops. Damn it. Now listen, this better be better. Looking for royalty free music? Yes. Discover. Read aloud selection. <gasps> I'm so glad that I can have something else fucking re read this now. Let's let's go let's go over voice options, shall we? Oh, I'm broken. We're great. <laughs> the page crashed. Extremely fucking rude. I was into that. All right, I'm back. I was kind of scared going upstairs. First, they say the ghosts followed Hernandez around the state and attacked her friends and acquaintances, <laughs> including an attempted hanging. What a dick. I want to see, apparently there was a video of one of the investigators getting attacked, so I'm hoping that I can find that somewhere. During the interviews, we kept hearing what sounded like a 200-pound rat running around the attic, Taff recalls. Station of overpressure, human. he says. I thought I had left the ghost back in the house. I thought everything was going to be okay. That ghost said thank you again. Then, Hernandez claims, the phenomena returned. When she and two neighbors moved a TV in- <laughs> Some of this scary music? Yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> and it's cracking me up. She called the Ghostbusters again, and they arrived late one night and entered what Hernandez describes as- The Ghostbusters. For starters, the researchers could not get their video cameras to work something kept switching off the equipment. Damn boogeyman. He said, no, uh, uh not without my consent. I do kind of believe in like supernatural, but also I feel like it's became more of an entertainment type thing. So I feel like a whole bunch of shit is fabricated and whatnot. Authorities determined that the seaman had not been murdered, but had sustained the wound when he fell off a dock. I'll grow up one day. Maybe this is it. This is definitely it. Absolutely it. Okay, so that- whoa. Whoa, what the fuck? Is this it? One night, when Jackie went to check on her children, she was met instead by a sight straight out of a horror movie, a haggard old man sitting in the corner of the room staring back at her. She described his eyes as glowing and his face emotionless. Sounds in a good. state of panic, she ran to her neighbor's house where Susan calmed her down and listened to her bizarre tale. So does she like get her kids or anything? Or does she just run out because same? Because, I mean, he wasn't hurting the kids. But he might hurt me. He might be mad about me popping up. But, uh, I mean, those kids can defend themselves. Just kidding. I would guess I would help my kids. But still, that man better leave me alone. Mostly images photographed and videoed. Somebody threw a pan at her. That was not a ghost. Oh, I forgot I had music playing in my ears. And I was like, hold the fuck up, who's playing classical music? And says she got a picture to prove her poltergeist tried to strangle oh. a man in her- Okay. So it was a picture. I thought it was a video. Okay, I'm least convinced now. That could have been easily just done. <laughs> Especially a picture. I thought that there was a, a there was a video with it, but I guess not. So if they done this investigation and shit, and they got on a TV show, why was that not captured on video? The ghost in the attic. <laughs> the ghost in the attic. It's called The X-Files, the hit TV show exposing the bizarre and mysterious world of the paranormal. Now, America- Side note, I used to be terrified of The X-Files. Like, I would be terrified of just the theme song in general. The theme song would come on and I would run and I would hide. Of the real life oh, damn, the fuck? Hold on. Why are they legs so fucking long? Look at that shit. They aliens, they sell. Got some long ass motherfucking legs. Hers is broken right there. She got a broken ass leg. What are those, some Jankos or what? Real life X Files and uncovers heart stopping tales of Onyx. Look at him. He's so distraught. See, this. Th here's a fucking video. Here's a video. Why the fuck wasn't the video taken of him getting strangled? Lion ass motherfuckers. The TV would you know they cannot <laughs> I love the dramatization. All of a sudden I feel, feel this thing around my neck. And it's 
Did he keep it around his neck? Okay. I'm calling bullshit. Why would you keep it around your neck? Calls that run with blood. Midnight cry. Bitch, that's a leak. <laughs> How was that blood? I what? If if they're calling that blood, I'm calling that stupid. Joining me is a woman who claims to still be living with a ghost that she first met in 1989. Please welcome Jack. <laughs> she said it like it was a casual thing. She first met this ghost in 1989. So there was only a photo. Why the fuck wasn't a video taken of it? This is super fucking easy to just do to yourself. So here's my thing. I do believe, like, like I said, I do believe in some supernatural shit. But it's just like, some people do it f for entertainment. Absolutely for entertainment. And even if that girl truly thought that she lived with a ghost or whatever. And I mean, even if there was one there. This guy could have set this up himself. Like, who the fuck is this? No one knows who the fuck this is. So. Susan also claimed to have seen a lamp float seven feet across a room before dropping to the floor right in front of her. If I seen anything like that, I would shit myself five times in a row. Really quick, I want to like share some experiences I have. I have had just to kind of, I don't know, show that, like I want to believe some of this shit. But uh, I have had experiences and I mean, it might have been like just in my head it might have been I mean it could have been anything whatever uh, but there's always that but and it's the reason why I kind of believe some of this stuff um, when I was a kid like I would see weird shit the, that's the best way to explain it like I would see shadows like in my grandparents house and it was like uh, people shadows like it would freak me the fuck out uh, I would see that some of their pictures and shit would move as in like the person in the pictures kind of deal And I don't know if I was a kid, so I just imagined that they moved so I felt like they would move So that's one of those eh things um I have I swear to God <laughs> I swear <laughs> that I have saw What people would think or what people would think look like alien activity. So let me explain uh we were outside, we was having a little friend get together kind of deal, and I was just looking up at the sky, like, no huge deal. Uh, I saw a couple of shooting stars in my life, so I'm just sitting there chilling, and uh, I see a shooting star. I'm like, holy shit, there's a shooting star. And I start to tell my friend, and I'm like, of course, keep looking at it. Okay, so this shooting star <laughs> comes to a fucking abrupt halt. It just fucking stops okay <laughs> fucking it's going really fast like super fucking fast like not airplane fast not jet fast not any it fucking was zooming so it fucking came across the sky came to a fucking complete stop abrupt stop did a loop and fucking went back the other direction okay so I freaked the fuck out naturally and I was like, <laughs> all I could say, I was like, what the fuck? I got up, I think they had a trampoline back there. I think. I was laying on something. I think there was a trampoline. But, um, I, there was, okay, I remember there was. So I just fucking went inside. I got up and I <laughs> went inside because I'm like, I don't, I don't even want to address that. I don't even want to talk about me seeing that because it was so fucking strange. And I was like, if I say something about it, they're going to hear me and they're going to come get me. And I'm not here for that. So that was another experience. I have had a personal experience with like what I felt like were demons. Uh, however, I was not in the right state of mind. But it's never happened after that. And there's some stuff, uh, lack of better words. I was in a very dark place. I got tied up into some stuff that I felt like would make me feel better. Uh, I had a resentment towards Christianity because of the stuff that I was through as a kid and whatnot. And I started, I guess, doing a lot of research into different religions and stuff. And, um, uh, pretty much, long story short, I pretty much saw a demon. 
what I consider a demon. And it, I was walking outside to go to like sit behind my shed because that was kind of like my zen area. And as I was walking out there, I saw a shadow. Shadow went. So, okay. You're me, kind of thing. Uh, further towards the back of the woods, there was a dark shadow. And I just thought it was a fucking regular ass shadow. I don't know why it caught my eye, but I mean, I watched it. But that shadow went from one spot to another real fast. It went like from here to here to here. And then it like. Uh, pretty much settled maybe about 20 or 30 feet away from me. And it's so fucking weird talking about it because I feel like I was in a weird state of mind when this happened, but also it's so fucking vivid that it kind of like, I feel like I'm lying to myself kind of deal. But anyways, uh, it stopped and when it stopped, I could see clearly what it was and it was half dog half cat half human there I said it and it stopped it sat like a dog and then it licked its paws like a cat would to like clean itself or something freaked me the fuck out but at the time it didn't really freak me out it was just like the first thing in my mind was that I wanted to kill it or wanted to fight it or get rid of it or some shit and so I went inside and I got a big machete and went back out to my backyard and was just looking for it. But I didn't even go through the back door. I went through the front door, I guess, because when I felt like it took off, I felt like it took off back in another direction, kind of like towards where our cul-de-sac used to be. And so I started walking over there, but then I realized that I was like outside in the middle of the road walking around with a fucking machete. So, I snapped back fucking to it. I just went inside my house. Went inside my house to calm down. Um, I think my mom had came in a couple minutes afterwards. So, after she had came in, me and, like, I had went to my room. I kept my door open because I was freaking the fuck out. Because really weird shit was happening. Um, kept my door open and I had... I was playing a song on my iPod. It was like one of the fucking iPod Nano type things. So it was like the smaller iPods. And I started playing a song. And when I was playing the song, the song started skipping and buffering. Now, obviously the weird fucking part, <laughs> how does a song skip or buffer and an iPad, like, well, and an iPod, because it's digital, right? So that was fucking weird. So it was skipping, and it was, like, buffering and shit on an iPod. And then, shit, just goes silent, and I bullshit you not. Like I said, I may have been going insane. I do not fucking know. I was in a dark place. I don't have any explanation, period. I really don't. But the music stopped, and then in my ears, because I had my ear, my earbuds in, I just heard my name. So, like a male voice, say my name. Took out my ear. Well, I didn't really. Yeah, I took out my my damn headphones, and then I just threw my fucking my iPod because it scared the shit out of me. Uh, started hyperventilating. Went in the living room to sit down to calm down. And uh, like my mom, she was kind of like. I was like, I'm going to stay in here for a minute. And she was like, what? She was like, why? Because I stayed, I was a teenager. I stayed in my room constantly. And so she thought that was weird. Uh, finally calmed down. After a few minutes, I went back into my room. I went back in my room, started kind of like, I picked up my iPod, started laying back in my bed, whatever the fuck I, I was doing. And there was a knock at my door. And <laughs> my mom answered the door. And a fucking youth pastor was at my house. And it was a friend's... Like, I didn't go to church often at all. I didn't, like, 
I don't know. I, I, I'm not, I was, I've never been much of a church go goer, but he just randomly showed up at my house. I have no idea why. I do not understand how he came to my house, and I do not, I never filled out anything at, a char at the church or anything with my address in it, and it was just super strange that all that happened in one night. So, I actually started wearing a cross because I'm not too religious, but I am like, I do believe in like the symbolism, if that makes any sense. So, I started wearing a cross and it did kind of like make me feel more comfortable and uh, I just felt like I was being watched for a very long time. It was super strange. But, this is why I kind of like believe in some of the supernatural shit, but there's also shit that I feel like is fabricated and made more than what it actually is. And so I want to believe <laughs> that isn't that an X Files movie, but I don't know. It's been so long since I've had those experiences that you know how when you look back on some of your childhood memories and you're like, did that actually happen or is it just something I made up? That's the state that I'm in now because this happened 12 years ago, if not more. So it's really hard to kind of like tell, I guess. But, I mean, it's still fucking in my mind. However, what she did not expect to see was the apparition of a thin old man with grey sunken skin, wearing a red flannel vest and high water trousers, sat cross-legged on the vacant bottom bunk. See, that kind of stuff, I'm just like, that may have happened. Because, just like I was explaining my little, my things, like, it's, you remember so much detail that it's fucking that is weird it's immediately they reported orbs of light appearing without any notable source see okay when it comes to orbs i honestly 100 percent do not really believe in orbs because i feel like it was an excuse for a person who was recording or a person who was taking pictures it was the reflection of a dust particle and it evolved into being orbs. I don't, I don't know. I don't really believe in orbs. I feel like orbs could literally be absolutely anything. I think when you're in one of these situations, when you're in a state of fight or flight or freeze, like all of your senses are hyperactive. So therefore, I honestly believe that under states of distress, under like all this other stuff, you can see what you want to see kind of thing. You can make stuff up, you can you can think it into existence kind of deal. So that's why I'm just, I don't know, I don't believe in the, the whole orbs deals. It's just too easy to debunk. They're in an attic, if they saw orbs, easily could have been- Burn turned in the direction of his colleague and took a picture instinctively using the flash to illuminate the scene and assess what was happening. To his horror, he saw that a length of cord had somehow tightly wrapped itself around Wheatcraft's neck, pinning him against a wooden beam. Fortunately, he was still able to breathe, but needed assistance in freeing himself, and desperately wanted to get out of the attic. Eh, he was clearly traumatised by this ordeal, and the entire team left shortly afterwards. See, I don't believe that, because it literally... If there's something wrapped around my damn neck and tied to a fucking any damn thing, I'm not going to get out of the attic and still have it wrapped around my fucking neck. It was loosely around his neck when it was when he was being videoed. And it's just, no, like absolutely, it, I would not still have it around my neck, period. I feel like that was done for entertainment reasons and I don't believe that part either. She heard scratching sounds coming from the storage shed outside, followed by the aforementioned orbs of light moving around the trailer without any apparent source. So, she heard scratching sounds coming from the storage shed outside. I feel like that could have been anything. Literally, it could have been anything. So, I feel like she was paranoid. I feel like she did, you know, go through something. Something. And I feel like she was just paranoid after that. Like, I mean, rightfully so. But anything, if you go through that and your mind convinces you that that actually happened or if it even did actually happen, 
you're gonna have some sort of trauma towards it so anything bad that happens anything that remotely relates to the situation you're going to automatically relate it to that situation later that same month the activity rose to a climax when her daughter's bedspread randomly set alight okay so that is kind of <laughs> intense i feel like the ghostbusters that she hired or whatever wanted a scene for themselves they attempted to record their activities but unfortunately, and some say conveniently, the cameras would not work consistently to capture any of the reported activity. See, that's the thing. Why not? It just doesn't make sense to me. It might not be that the haunting itself was a hoax, there we go. but yep. because of its fame, yep. it has been retold, sensationalized and embellished upon so many times in the intervening years that it's hard to know what is true yeah. and what isn't. First and foremost, where is the evidence? Despite the fact that there was a whole team of people investigating the strange activity, very little, I'm if any, photographic <laughs> or video evidence exists. Sorry. I thought I felt something... fall against my... chair. But it may have been the sound effect of the... Uh... Oh, the music I got playing in the background. Very little, if any, photographic or video evidence exists. Exactly. Taff and his team explain this by saying that their equipment malfunctioned whenever they tried to capture anything on film. Though the more cynical amongst us would agree that this seems a little too convenient. And that's what I mean. Like, I really do feel like that girl had a presence with her, I guess. But the... <sighs> I guess I feel like the combination between that and then her hiring someone to come in and then them coming in and doing what they did heightened her, I guess, assumptions or whatever the fuck. And it's just, I don't know. It doesn't seem true. And especially that fucking picture, like, it even makes me not believe it more. Questions have also been raised over the analysis carried out on the ooze sample as the scientist involved refused to be named. Uh. It could be that whoever carried out the tests did not want to associate their organization with a paranormal investigation. Yeah. Or it could be that this scientist simply never existed. Yeah. I fully believe that you can work your mind up to the point to where it can hallucinate this shit. Even if it was manifested, like, you, once you get to a certain point, and you're over it it's like did you mentally get better or i don't know i feel like there's so many aspects to shit like this that it's just, it's just interesting so thank you to uh bedtime stories for that why why one he came out and he still had it around his neck and two like like they said there, there should have been if this shit did happen why didn't they try to uh cut him down they just started taking pictures so okay he's got an interview ah! i'm not staying here Barry. i'm out here i gotta get out of here i can't stay here and uh we asked what had happened she said well she'd been hit by a can of coke or something and had pepsi it wasn't coke it was pepsi it's kind of a long ride down there and we're See, talking about several they things on the way down right here i don't understand <laughs> If you have cameras and videos and shit like that, like, malfunctioned, like your stuff malfunctioned when you needed it the most, but it didn't malfunction during these times. Why did you leave Jeff behind? Um, again, we just kind of, we, we looked, I turned and looked at him and kind of, you know, shrugged my shoulders. It's like, well, why are they yelling? There's nothing going on. You know, at least just... That's my thing. Like, as far as we could see upstairs, and I assumed that he was walking, you know, right behind me, that we would both walk that way. But it was kind of like you know, that makes even the story more incredible because Jeff could have been <laughs> Jeff could have been gimmicking it up. So I had this camera in my hand. So my first reaction was simply to raise the camera and take a photograph of why was he on this 45 degree angle? I couldn't see anyway, right kind of thing. Uh, but still, like, so when you drop a flashlight. Unless the flashlight went completely off, and he didn't say that, he just said he dropped it. it is, there's gonna be some fucking light still. So even if 
the excuse of like, oh, well, I used the flash to see. Even with that, like, it shouldn't be light reflects. So if I cut all the fucking lights off, like, in this basement right now, and I cut a flashlight on, even with the flashlight aiming in one direction, I should be able to see a good bit of the basement. So that's another way I just call bullshit. If you're using a camera's flash to guide your way, each time that you use that flash, it's fucking up your eyesight in general. I don't... I don't believe this. Oh. And he dropped the flashlight, so that's why I couldn't see you to get over to him uh, until I took a second picture to make sure I wasn't going to trip over something. But he didn't take a picture of the fucking floor. <laughs> if you were trying to see where to go to make sure you weren't tripping over anything, you would be taking a picture of the ground so you can see where to walk. If he didn't okay, it. Okay, when you asked him what had happened to him, again, react, how did he respond to you? Uh, well, again, when I first approached him, he was, you know, starting to come out of it, I guess you would say. And again, he said, there's something on my neck, but which was kind of a whatever. I wonder if he just thinks he said there's nothing on my neck. I don't, yeah. I feel like he said there's something on my neck and there's something on my, like, he might have thought he said there's nothing on my neck. Those words are too similar to, uh, to really, I guess, get behind. I don't know. Or monotone, not a particular emotion to it, but when he said there's nothing on my neck, it was really an anger, and it's like there's nothing. He kept it on, and that's the thing. Like, take it off. I don't understand. Like, anything that was trying to kill me or that was almost going to kill me, I wouldn't still have it on my neck. Especially when I got down. Bitch, it would be coming off. on my neck. And it's big enough to fucking even leap over his head. I don't believe it. What do you think about that rope, Gary? Was that rope, in your opinion, was that rope up there already? Or did, you, did you guys see that rope up in the attic prior to the hanging? Or was that something that just came out of the blue? See, I mean, why? It's like he's posing with it or some shit. Either he done it for attention or they planned it before they even got there. And it was up there, the attic was empty, it was very small, and as I said, there's no... And see, there's video footage right here of him up in the attic. And probably the most telling thing to me was uh, that he could not or would not have done this is because uh, in the process of whatever happened to him, uh, the glasses he was wearing had, had fallen to the floor of the attic. Now these were, were just brand new glasses. I mean, he was talking about them on the trip down there. It was about a half hour ride, as I said before. And he's... Is, is he saying that he couldn't do that because he couldn't see? It doesn't take a fucking genius to tie something with, like I can tie shit with my eyes closed and I thought this happened and I think a lot of hold on why is a broom and a stove off things happen wow. to them they why is that like that why'd they show that rope? picture it's so confusing about, but, uh, the rope was was so tight around his neck and as you can see from the photographs that he was why is he posing with it though it doesn't make any fuck like it looks like they're it's like showing it off or something. I 100% believe that this was completely staged. 